So hello everybody. I hope you are all well. Welcome to the new webinar brought to you by BenQ. We have uh, a very uh, uh, interesting topic, I think. It's very ambitious. It's how to set some principles to uh, help you uh, start the career or continue your career or to learn about art. Uh, of course, everything you will hear here is uh, from my point of view. It's based on my experience. Uh, many of you know me as an artist, so uh, many works that you will see here will be uh, familiar to you. So, a few words about me. Uh, I am, I'm, my name is Adam Matinakis. I am half Greek, half Polish. I was born in Poland in uh, 1972. And uh, after uh, 10 years, I moved with my family to Greece. And this movement uh, has shaped me a lot because uh, coming from a totally different culture from the north of Europe and going to the south, which uh, also had a very different uh, political system. At the time, Poland was a communistic country and Greece uh, was a Western country. Uh, I always liked art. I, I always liked many things. I didn't know that I would become an artist. Uh, this actually happened uh, during the years. Uh, I, I studied interior design, uh, industrial design. I studied decorative arts, but uh, I never felt, although I worked in those fields, I never felt that that was what I was really looking for. And um, so I, I experimented many things uh, inside the field of uh, uh, visual arts. So um, when I was studying, uh, uh, when I was in the in the academy of uh, studying interior design, uh, th there was the, the coming of the computer uh, graphics, and uh, I saw a lot of uh, students uh, showing and presenting their works through um, 3D, digital 3D. Uh, that was before the millennium and uh, not many people used to do those things and it was strange. I was, I was at the beginning, you know, very negative about the usage of computers uh, in, the, in, in the terms of art. Uh, because I felt it was a very cold uh, medium, it couldn't um, uh, project what an artist uh, has got inside him, the feelings, but uh, slowly understood that uh, this this medium has come to to stay, and um, and I started to 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 learn those programs. I started to learn even how to operate the computer. I didn't know how to operate the computer at the time. So uh, when I started all this, and slowly when I got a little deeper into this, I realized that the possibilities are really really endless especially in the terms of 3D, because actually when you get into digital arts in general, uh, there are many softwares and many different ways of uh, creating something. There is 2D, as many of you know, like editing photographs with Photoshop. There are great uh, uh, webinars brought to you by BenQ that I've seen that are really nice on different technique on how can you develop uh, specific ideas in this field. And uh, there is also the 3D, which I started to learn as my main uh, medium. And at that time, it was mainly to to present my uh, interior design works that I was I was working at the time. So uh, 3D has great abilities in showing photorealistic scenes. Uh, of course, it's a it's a medium which is which evolves all the time, and we are talking now about 20 years ago. And uh, I realized that th the potential are endless. So uh, the medium itself guided me and I started to do new things. I started to create art. I started to create works which did not actually have any function. I just did them for, for myself, which many artists do actually. And uh, by, by, by creating this, I started to experiment with uh, several 
uh, techniques, uh, 3D, as I said, is, is, is really rich in, te in techniques that you can combine, that you can work on, and uh, it's, it's really creative. So, at, at some point, I started to uh, work as an architecture visualizer. So, this is, this is creating in 3D and in a photorealistic mode, uh, scenes of architecture which uh, will be very much, you know, very much realistic to the viewer before the actual building will be built. So it's also cheap, it's also good for the designer, it's also good for the client. So I worked some years uh, into this, but uh, parallelly to this, I, I created artworks and uh, in 2009, I uh, I won an international competition in Luxembourg, and uh, from then I I start to believe that my career has become more uh, interna international. Sorry, and uh, I felt that uh, the doors are opening now, and you know sometimes we need um, a push from somewhere and this is what was a push for me it was a psychological push i felt more confident about it those help those things help actually and uh, from then I, I said that uh, i'll become only an artist i will create only works of art and i'll see what i will do with them normally you know when you are a painter you paint and you go to a gallery and present your works and somebody buys it or not and at the same time, for, because it's not easy to, to live from painting only and selling, uh, I, I might do other things like uh, teaching, which I did in many different uh, institutions, and, uh, and continue to work and uh, experiment. So I have actually worked in many different types of uh, visual arts, uh, I will describe them in a later point, but I have worked in uh, interior design, I have worked in industrial design, decorative arts, I have worked in architectural visualizations, I wor worked as a graphic designer, ceramic designer. I thought at some point I was working with ceramics and uh, with 3D, and uh, that was strange for me because I thought that I'm working with one, one of the oldest mediums, artistic mediums that exist, ceramic and also with one, one of the newest, which was the 3D. So, uh, I continued to work and things began to grow. I had uh, created an audience slowly and uh, I created this work, the one that you see that many of you probably know. And um, uh, it's, um, it's, a, it's a thing, sorry. And uh, by the years, I have um, by the years I have uh, I become more famous in a way that many works of, works of mine used as uh, uh, covers. So that was very good for me. I started to support myself only with art, uh, which is I think the best. And I guess many of you are starting to think, and this is the question actually how to become an artist that you can support yourself so uh to address the topic today uh it's it's really important to uh, understand that to understand that uh, um to understand the, the, the question itself how to become visual artist what is art actually so, uh, from a um, definition that I found in the internet, because it's not easy to uh, define actually art, it's, it's got uh, a very s many subjective things inside and objective. And uh, one definition is that uh, art, art is a diverse range of human activities in creating visual, auditorial, performing art artifacts, artworks expressing the author, author's imaginative, conceptual ideas or technical skills, intended to uh, be appreciated primarily by the beauty or emotional power. So, this is a subjective, let's say, uh, uh, definition and uh, many, many 
can uh, disagree to this. Uh, I think that the modern critics will not totally take it literally like this, but this is more or less what it, what it is art. For me, uh, art is actually uh, a, a, a communication tool. So it's, first of all, it's a tool. So it's not the actual thing. And what is the actual thing? The actual thing is communication. And uh, it's a spe special uh, place we have, a special thing we have, very rich one with very rich in mediums that we can express ideas, we can, uh, we can do so many things, we can get closer to people, we can support ourselves with this also, we can, we can do so many things. And for me, the problem, uh, it's not a, pro a problem, it's its nature actually, it's that uh, art has got a dual, a dual nature. It's got a personal uh, state and it's got a universal, a universal state. The personal state actually is when the artist is working, is creating, and everything that comes before it, like I mean the ideas, the uh, inspirations, and everything that he will uh, work with and work on. And this this period, the the, the personal that I say, that I call it, it's uh, it's also a form of communication, but at that time you communicate uh, with yourself, with your experiences. And by the way, you know, being an artist, you're always an artist. When you sleep, you are an artist. You are uh, anytime you're an artist because you never know an idea that comes to you, even in your dreams. There are many artists which work with their dreams. And uh, it's also it's also a place a time where uh, you work with yourself. I strongly believe that artist is not actually a profession. You may make money from it or not. Well, it's not that easy. I have to tell you from the beginning, but uh, you can make it. And there are many many ways now, but I will discuss it later. So. Um, the personal part is where you work with yourself, actually, and with your theme. So it's your ideas, your thing, your thing, the way that you see things, the way that you see life, actually, because you know, nature of life is actually very much dependent. Uh, nature of art, sorry, it's very much dependent on 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 uh, life. It's it's an extension. It's an uh, uh, it's a parallel world. It's a uh, it's an, uh, a projection of life. So. In this, this is a very, very important part, but it's it's a part uh, for the artist actually. And the next state is the one that I call universal. It's a state where the artwork is finished actually. So when the artwork is finished, uh, then the artwork has got its own life. It it goes to galleries, it goes to your uh, media, to your website, and it's ready to be sold or just to be seen, whatever you choose to to, to do with it. And um, in, in, this, this is the, the communication that an artist has got with the, with the rest of the world, with the audience. And the audience is really important for the artist because without the audience there will be actually no art. And uh, Think about it. If if somebody is uh, alone in an island and is stuck there, knowing that no no one else will ever come to him, of course, I, I will forget the depression for being totally alone. But uh, let's let's take this as a story. Uh, would he ever create art? I I don't know. I'm not sure. Probably he will try to satisfy his survival mode, but. If, if he wants to communicate with others, art is one of the possibilities for communication. And uh, here are some works from an exhibition you will see more uh, later on. I will also explain you how, how they are created, the final output. And uh, those, those two states, the personal and universal, is kind of duality that I also use in my works a lot. So when you, when you see two persons, for example, 
uh, it doesn't matter the sex. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, because I use them as, as the symbols. It's because I see duality almost everywhere. Uh, when there is a meaning of something, when there is something occurs in my life, there's like always there's something that is opposing it or uh, going close to it as a second thing. It's. I think it's. It's. It's for the balance of things. I think that things are balanced when there are two different uh, powers which uh, uh, come together and uh, and they and they they try to balance. So uh, here's uh, an invitation card from an uh, exhibition I had in 2015, I think, and uh, the exhibition itself. Uh, I have had many exhibitions around the world, and uh, it's a unique uh, experience for an artist. It's it's a unique experience for communication also. So this is a very inspirational guy. I use uh, science and many of his ideas also in my work. So look, uh, Einstein is saying genius one percent talent and ninety nine percent hard work, and uh, I believe that this is true. So talent is um, also a vague thing. It's we don't really know what it is. We think that somebody is born with the ability to uh, beautifully draw a perfect realistic uh, person. It's it's not the case. This is uh, this is work. This is uh, experimenting. This is everyday, you know, being with this thing. It's 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 mainly work. And uh, if I could give only one answer to this question, let's say, uh, how to become an artist is actually work. But uh, I think you already knew that. But if you don't, work. So, and, and you, don't, you don't have to work eight days uh, per hour. You can, because I, I told you, you're an artist all the time. You can work half an hour, but you need to get your mediums, that, the, the medium that you have chosen, either it is a painting, either it's a sculpture, either it's digital art, it's Photoshop, editing images, anything, and uh, try to focus and uh, press your mind into this because our mind is something that actually uh, the more we, we, we are used to work with something, then uh, it becomes more familiar and comes with uh, new ideas and new ideas. Uh, I have so many ideas because I forced my mind to, to think of terms of ideas and concepts. So every, I see a tree and I see dualities or other things also. It's, it's not only dualities. Another very important uh, thing, thing for me to become an artist and to understand art is to, uh, to understand its history, history of art. The history of art is actually the history of human creation. It's the most beautiful history. I love history of art and it's very inspirational. I think it can help you very much uh, for your works in depth study of, of, uh, of arts. And uh, look, this, this is a cave painting of a horse in Lascaux Caves in 16,000 uh, before our era. It's, it's very old. And humans have the need to project, to depict uh, things that they see every day, like horses, horse, I guess, and some other elements that we can understand a little from their lives at that time, which is very old. It's 16,000. This is the book that I uh, propose you. At the end, I will I will be proposing you things in general. But at the end, I have a bibliography about those, so you can write at the end if you want. So this is the history of rather like the most. It has influenced me also. It's ha it's got its part in my story, and uh, the this history from Gombrich. Uh, it starts with this quote, there really is no such thing as art, there are only artists. It's an interesting point of view, but it also uh, it, it is directing to the point that art is personal, that I told you before, but not only, I think. So, uh, we can see, we can see uh, for example, you can see here uh, a statue, a Venus of Wilderfold, which is even older than 
the cave painting that I showed you before. This is 24,000 years before Christ. It's, it's, it's a long time before. And if you look at the form, you can, if you go, if you are familiar with uh, contemporary galleries and sculpture, you can see forms like this existing in, in a contemporary galleries. For me, this is uh, an indication that many artists take inspiration from the past, from artists from the past. And this is a kind of dialogue, actually. It's a dialogue between the past and the future. So this is the power, actually, of art. It's, it, uh, this is an extraordinary thing. And uh, this dialogue has been always been, there's, the, you cannot actually create something from nothing. So uh, you always take inspiration from something else. Some artists say that you can steal from others. You can do it as long as you make it your own. You change forms into your own style. This is another uh, sculpture, an old sculpture. This is uh, from uh, around 4,000 years ago from, the, from Greece, Cycladic art. This is also a very familiar form of modern art, but this is very old. It's, it's another kind of uh, uh, dialogue, example of dialogue. Uh, this is actually um, a fresco from the Minoan civilization who flourished in Crete, in the island of Crete, where actually I live now. I live for years now in the island of Crete, uh, in a small village. And um, I see traces of the civilization, especially where I live now. And uh, it was a very remarkable civilization. I was, every day that I, that I have walked with my dog there, I, I tried to imagine how they lived, how it was a very peaceful uh, civilization. They, they art, which is actually our uh, um, information that we have about them. We don't have uh, we, we we don't have many writings at the time because we have not uh, deciphered linear A language which they used. But there is not much evidence of this language. So we have art. Uh, we can see uh, several uh, things of their lives. For example, here is a bull leaping. It's a game that they had. It's quite dangerous. It was like a bull was coming and somebody was leaping over this bull. It sounds dangerous to me. This is a classical uh, Greek sculpture. And, uh, you know, art, as we call it, it, that it didn't always have the same meaning. So except from the personal view of every artist, what art is, and uh, it's good if you ask yourself what art is for me. And uh, you try to give your honest answer and always try to be honest with your work. It's, it's very crucial, I think. Uh, we can see it, it's it's kind of uh, religious art actually because it's uh, Hermes and the Day gods, and religion was used a lot uh, in the art during the centuries. This is a Byzantine mosaic from Hagia Sophia. It's ninth century, and uh, art has been used uh, as a uh, tool of for uh, praying gods for for. Uh, uh, communicating a religion for, for, for uh, politics also. And by the years, we can see also the evolution of art itself. You can see how in the Renaissance, this is uh, Frangelico, and you can see the first attempts of real uh, perspective in, in, uh, in the art. And by, by real, I say, uh, in a, they have found a, a way to create perspective uh, uh, as it really is, as, as we see it, in a more scientific way, with lines and, uh, and several aspects of it. And uh, as it slowly, uh, uh, the evolution of art has brought us in 17th century in, in Holland, where actually the artist there uh, has shaped the form of that the artist uh, exists now in the way that they, they stopped taking commissions that were happening uh, before from uh, rich people making uh, uh, portraits like many famous, you know, like Mona Lisa uh, or religious ones that were commissioned from the church. And they started to create everyday uh, paintings 
things of uh, simple things like like this and uh, later they went on and selling them to the people who like to 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 buy so and we come closer to our era we this is uh, van gogh van gogh uh, was saying i do my painting and i paint my dream I like the quotes of artists very much, and you will see a lot of them. It's uh, one of my passions to read biographies and read quotes. This is, uh, this is the point uh, where uh, art starting to come to a modern area. It's uh, Cezanne. The form starts to break a little. It's not, uh, you know, the faithfully depicted form of somebody or, or a building of, of nature we start to see breaks and we see it more later with Picasso and many of course others but Picasso probably is uh, the most famous one and uh, then we go also to artists like Dali and surrealism uh, which uh, they also added, uh, uh, Dali actually added uh, um, the, 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 the point of view, the philosophy of Freud inside, like, like there is uh, psychology inside of uh, artworks and also the concept of dreams, what it means, etc, etc. This is Jackson Pollock, this is a very interesting artist to me. And um, you'll see his film if you want. It's for me. It's when when I uh, run out not of ideas because I somehow don't run out of ideas, but sometimes I run out of energy to create, you know, and the will to create, which is really important. And this is something that uh, it must be worked, so that you push yourself to to work. And uh, we come we come to this modern area. You probably are familiar with this work. It it was last year shown in uh, Miami in Art Basel, and it created some fuss uh, because of the is this art? Well, it it is conceptual art, and it's created by uh, Catalan, who, who is a very famous person in the world of art, and. Uh, and uh, it, it is now, I think, uh, sent to MoMA now. Uh, of course, not the banana. It's the certificate that is actually actually sold. And this this work sold for one hundred uh, twenty thousand uh, dollars. The first edition. I think there are three. The second from one hundred fifty. I think it is art. And. Uh, uh, if this person and this artist believe it's art and uh, if this happened in Art Basel by a very established uh, gallery called Perotin, it's, it's art. So either, either you don't like it or I don't like it, it doesn't really matter. And uh, I'll tell you because it's interesting this. So it, it's catchy, it's called uh, Comedian, so it's important uh, title also. Uh, this guy, the Catalan, he in 2016 he replaced a toilet at the Guggenheim with a fully functional gold one. So he's um, an absurdist in a way. So, so uh, I will not extend more to what artists, but we will try to see now the divisions of uh, of, of visual art. We're coming to visual arts now. And um, visual art is uh, forms of art like painting, as you see here, like drawing, sculpture, ceramic design, photography, video. And you see uh, at the beginning, there was also an, a, a narrow uh, inclusion of, of types like painting, sculpture and drawing maybe. Uh, but by the time it's, it's wider and wider, it's, it includes more and more uh, creative uh, mediums. For example, 20 years ago, there was no 3D, digital 3D that I do. It's now inside the visual arts. It's printmaking, which what I do actually is closer to this. It's architecture, of course. It's graphic design, so it's also industrial design. It's fashion design. It's interior designs, decorative art. And there are other artistic disciplines as performing arts. So uh, 
there's also there's also an important thing that you can uh, look on the internet because we don't have much time here to develop many things. In fact, every every uh, chapter that I talk about could be uh, not a seminar. It could be a, a subject in the university for the whole semester or two. So uh, I'm just trying to show you my personal uh, uh, view. What is important? This is um, in, uh, if you would like to uh, read about uh, a theory of art. This is a very important uh, philosopher, Martin Heidegger. He, in this book, The Origin of the Work of Art, he 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 has uh, stated many things uh, about what is uh, uh, work of art. He he tried to talk about it in terms of being existence and truth. Uh, some some terms there are, are really complicated. It's not easy to read, but when you will understand, you will be very happy. It might really, even one sentence might really change your uh, your uh, view and your perspective. And I, I propose you this book to start, and later you can you can uh, find new things about it. So let's let's talk a little about uh, the inspiration and uh, and elements from the beginning to the end. What is really inspiration? Because I, 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 I'm often asked, uh, what is my inspiration? Actually, inspiration is everything that you like, everything that you don't like, the things that uh, surround you, your uh, where you live in a city or in a countryside, everything that's it's around you it's inspiring to you even if you don't uh, know it uh, but it's up to you to decide which way you will go what you will use so that you will uh, unfold your creativity it doesn't really matter what it, is. it can be anything nobody will judge you or tell anything about what's the theme he is working about they may see about your artistic way of doing things also, which doesn't really matter. You should do yourself what, whatever you feel like and actually not really listen to, to, to other people. So don't, don't be shy, don't be shy to present yourself, work with yourself. And uh, for example, uh, my, my inspiration uh, is, I'm, in general, I think arts are, are, are somehow connected with uh, exist, existence. In uh, Claire, Paul Claire, the, the painter here that uh, I, I show you, was a really inspirational uh, artist for me. He was uh, a modernist. So he was teaching in the Bauhaus Academy in Germany, a very important uh, school, which many things that we see now, it's actually because of the school of, they influence very much modernist and uh, everything that is happening now. And this artist is also very influential. It's not, he's not so famous like uh, Picasso, but I think he's of such magnitude for me. And especially this work, which it's one face with two faces, with two different faces actually, and uh, the, the broken, uh, symmetry that you see, the colors, it's everything that I love about it. And uh, uh, Claire was a teacher at this uh, school, as I said, and he was he was he was trying to make uh, uh, scientific findings and research about uh, composition that we will talk right now, and the colors, the depth of the colors, the theory of colors. Uh, he's also a guy that you could search on the internet and find uh, about his lessons. It's it's another another um, example for me that a guy I never met. He died before I was born, of course. That has an influence, and there's this dialogue between uh, me and he, him, I, I suppose. And uh, those were his research with colors and and the depth of it. 
another guy who is very interesting, if you want to go very much in depth with the colors, was uh, Johannes Eaton. He was also a teacher at the Bauhaus School. So let's see now another element of the of the artistic creation because when you're creating and you have your surface you you need to you have some you have some uh, specific elements you have uh, lines you have shapes you have colors you have textures you have value you have form you have space all those elements you try to uh, combine them somehow in 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 several ways uh, so that it is interesting as a result so the first thing actually you see in a, in a in a piece of work is actually the this configuration this uh composition so uh, one way of dealing with it is is symmetry so in this works for example you can see how i use symmetry it's the symmetry is, is an axis in in either vertical, it can be di diagonal, it can be uh, uh, horizontal, it, it doesn't matter. And uh, if it's uh, vertical, for example, there is the left side and the right side, and they are symmetrical. It's like our face. So I use it a lot, uh, this configuration, uh, but I use it more in a, um, a broken way. That means that the one side is not totally uh, uh, identical to the other. Only maybe in the middle work I've uh, used more or less because this work is called understanding, and I try to uh, to show the uh, the balance that it needs and the equal equality that needs for a balance. So it is a little different, but it's in the same amount. Uh, and besides symmetry, there is of course asymmetry. There is no axis, and things are uh, configured in a different way. Uh, I really believe that Claire will help you with uh, with compositions. The more you study, the more you understand that the way of things inside, uh, because you're trying to balance things. Unless you are not, but this is had to be said from the beginning that I want an unbalanced configuration, an unbalanced. Uh, a way of showing things uh, because with this I will try to achieve this so if you have a plan for this it's perfectly okay to do anything but if you want uh, somebody to look at it and uh, feel the the balance of, of things uh, happening uh, you need to find a way to configure you need to balance those things another famous way of uh, um, of dealing with composition is uh, the golden ratio, which been, has been used from uh, ancient Greeks. It's been use, used by many artists. I have used it myself as well. And um, uh, there is the, the, the logic is that uh, you divide a surface into about uh, two thirds. And then the big one that is left, you also divide it, and you also divide, and you also divide. So you come to this kind of configuration, and you can use uh, your main point of focus of interest in this in this position where it's more dense, for example, or you can use other forms that you like, like the horizon that you see on the Serrat work. It's you can study this. You can find the internet a lot of. Uh, uh, paradigms about this. Uh, so, so here I will I will try to present you some of my work and uh, how I do with this. On the left you can see a file that is uh, created on the 3D Max. I'll show you in a while how I work with this file. And on the right you can see the the final rendering. Rendering we call the final image that comes out from from 3D. And uh, you can see also here some stages of how I work. So on the left, right, you can see uh, on the upper uh, left, sorry, <laughs> you can see the beginning of it and how it goes uh, by time. And uh, down right, you can see the final image. So in this work, for example, I have used uh, the 
configuration. It's not a symmetrical exactly. It's got some kind, but it's with the lines that it's on the background, which have uh, uh, been projected also on the on the figures. Um, I try to combine them. So let's let's see uh, the the 3ds Max. I use 3ds Max in 3D. There are many softwares that, that you can use, and um, 3ds Max is one of them. You can use Cinema 4D. You can use uh, Maya. You can use many other software if you are uh, uh, if you want. Uh, so the first thing that we see, uh, there are many buttons, this is true in those program, there are many buttons, many configurations, but you shouldn't be afraid if you want to start with this and get into this, uh, because you will not use all of them. Uh, and there are many of them because you can do a lot of thing here, things here. Actually, you can do so many things that uh, it's less time than the things that you can do. So it's a different approach, that, like painting, because I paint also, especially uh, in this uh, period. Uh, it's totally different medium. Every medium has its own uh, way of logic, its own way of, of, of creating. And uh, 3D is very inspirational for me. When I don't have ideas, which is, uh, it happens sometimes, I just open 3ds Max and I start to play. Actually, 3D and art in general is a game. You play with this. You you are like a child, and uh, we have four. Uh, this is the main thing that you have four windows, and uh, the three windows, uh, the two up and the left one, the left down one, are actually orthographic projectors. It is the top, as we seeing the, see the scene from the top, as we see it in front, and as we see on the on the left or on the right, we can configure the, them so we can see them how we like. And uh, the down right one is the camera, the camera that will render the final image. Actually, we can turn this to a 3D so that you can see how this thing looks. So this is the scene. The yellow things that you see here are the lights. There are also black ones, which I don't know if you see, but they are closed, they are switched off lights because I'm experimenting a lot with uh, the lighting design there. And the logic of 3D is that it's trying to imitate the world, actually. It's trying to imitate the world with uh, textures, with uh, the models, the matter, with the lights. Everything is, is based on, on reality, but then you can change it into non-realistic, if you like. You can do so many things, actually. And uh, when you have uh, set everything, uh, you have uh, you have your uh, scene ready. You have your materials. This is a material editor. Here we play with the materials. Each one of the uh, spheres, it's a different material that's been used or not. Some are not used uh, on the on the models. The, on the left here, there are, it's a panel which we use for uh, editing the models and uh, editing the animations. The, the, the timeline here that you see is used for animation because 3D uh, is used for animation as well. And, uh, you know, animation videos actually uh, many, it's a sequence of uh, still images like this one that you see. Uh, with each one, uh, the, that has a difference in something that's something like a hand moves or the whole scene moves and by by a fraction of a time and uh, we use mainly 25 uh, frames per second uh, that means in one second there are 25 different frames so that it's smooth on the eye uh, we can see the result of an animation and uh, this is a paradigm it will show. This is a paradigm of animations. So they are very, very simple animations. I create very simple animations. So I will try to um, to make a poll for you. Uh, how do you how how do you work with design? 
So you can answer if you like. So in which st stage are you? Are you, you work professional with design? Uh, design is a hobby for you. I'm just starting with design. I'm interested in design, but I haven't started. So if you like, tell me your, your voice. So I think that uh, we are very much uh, equal here. We found a balance, uh, more or less, uh, it's uh, one quarter for everybody. That is very interesting. And uh, hopefully what I can make you and can help you here is to make you love this thing. It's, it's, it's really, an, uh, the, the, the adventure of art, it's really, an unbelievable uh, experience. So if you are, uh, for those who are interested into getting into uh, digital design, either 3D or 2D with Photoshop or painting with, uh, uh, with, uh, with a computer, uh, first of all, you need uh, hardware. And this is the configuration that I use uh, uh, on my own. Uh, first of all, you need a monitor. Uh, you need a computer, uh, you need a, a, a printer, for example. I use them to create prints so that I sell them. Uh, a Wacom pen is very nice if you want to, uh, to paint. Uh, but the most important for me is the monitor, actually, because the monitor is, is, is for your eyes. It protects your eyes, it's what you see. It's very important. I have reviewed this. Uh, uh, model of uh, BenQ. It's uh, the PD2700U. Uh, uh, it's a professional model with a very good price. You sh I have a review on the internet, you can search for it. And uh, with 3D you will need uh, a more faster computer because it's very, it needs power, you know, it needs memory, it needs uh, uh, process, fast processors. Uh, so those are the digital tools that, that we use. It's, I have to tell you that uh, I'm painting now because uh, the digital creation, if you are 20 years and many hours in front of your computer, can become very tiring. Uh, another way of, of creating art also is create something on your 2D program or 3D and have an image, like the image uh, above. And this has been projected on a, this is a wall, uh, which was painted later. And uh, this is a technique that's been used uh, many years. Uh, also, Picasso has said that he has used projector in painting. Also, the German painter uh, Richter, which is one of my favorite, has done it. And I, 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 have, for, I have for you some Benkus uh, projector that you can look up. I don't have one now. But in the past, I have used it. I had one, but I'm thinking of buying. I'm thinking of buying the left one, but I will make uh, research uh, in depth more. For example, I created those two uh, about 20 years ago, I think, with projecting, uh, projecting images. So uh, this is uh, this is. I told you that I create 3D and then I create a digital file that it's a, a, a photography actually. So uh, my, my art, it's got many things. It's got sculpture because there is sculpture. I'm 3D space, as you, as you, as you saw, I can see from many uh, points. Uh, it's got also video elements because if you go to animation, it's got this, it's got lighting design, so it's got photography also. We've got a camera inside 3D. So, but, but the, the last thing, the output is actually a print in my case. And uh, my originals, the, the artworks that go to the galleries, etc., it's a print that is called the ASEC. It's uh, a print that it's mounted on. Uh, uh, a debond, but you see the back side on the top. It's uh, aluminium sandwich with a hanging system. And on top there is the the print, the the plexiglass with a specific glue, 
which gives much depth to the artwork. They are very nice to to look at. Uh, the most expensive uh, photography that was ever ever uh, uh, sold was the ASEC. And this is how it looks like from unboxing it. You can choose to have also uh, a not reflective uh, plexiglass, but it's much more expensive. It's an expensive technique to create, so uh, it needs also three weeks for the glue to dry for the artwork. It's also quite heavy. And this again, uh, you see some uh, exhibitions with my uh, DSX. So uh, now, whatever you choose to work on, on any kind of visual design, those principle, uh, principles are, I think, universal in a way. There is this personal thing that you need to work on with yourself a lot, and developing yourself will guide your art and uh, vice versa, it, it works both ways. And uh, there is also, as I said, the, the universal thing, how you can make and reach more people, of course, if you are into fine arts, like with galleries and stuff, uh, I, I propose you to take part in uh, in uh, uh, competitions. This is how I started, actually, as I said. And I have won some competition. Others I didn't win. It's okay. You know, in this in this uh, adventure, there'll be a lot of frustrations also. And. Uh, Uh, it, of course, uh, as an artist, you will have your spaces on the internet, you will have your Facebook page, your Instagram page, you can have uh, Behance uh, page, you can have ArtStation page, you can, you can on Google, you, you can find any way how to promote your art. There are so many articles, so very interesting. Uh, search which is the best for you, because it, de it depends also on the media that you have chosen. It's different for architecture, it's different for... Uh, for fine arts, for painting, it's it's there are differences there, but uh, you can you can take many answers uh, with this on the internet. Uh, if if you use this when you use the social media, so try to be active as much as you can. Uh, give people uh, your uh, details of your work. Uh, describe a little how you work. Feel free to be yourself. And um, so, as I said from the beginning, the most important is to, is to work. You have to work a lot, and uh, you can you can choose um, three D design. You can choose two D design. By the way, we have another another uh, question for you. Another poll. Uh, when you're editing your 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 work, uh, with what you're working from the for those who work on on the three D things or two D on the computers. So, is it a professional monitor design? Is it a regular home monitor or is it a, la a laptop? Okay, so I see that uh, most of you, 61% is using laptop. I used I used to, to have a laptop too, but um, laptop is very nice when you are moving a lot, etc., etc. But it's not the best to see your work if you're visual, because the colors it, it matters. The size also matters, you know. It's uh, I have the prints which I have in A2 also form, and uh, with my monitor I can you know rotate the the image and I can see almost the size of it. It's really helpful. So when you have the chance to go into a more desktop configuration, I would say that 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 you 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 do it. So. Uh, more advice is that I, I, I find I think that it will be um, uh, important for you and uh, interesting. 
uh, I, I said it before, don't be embarrassed. You are showing yourself. Nobody can tell you that if what you did here is not yourself. It's You are the only one to know if it, this is you or not. So tell tell your story. It's it's what you are you are. This is about art, I think. You are showing things with, with your own eyes. Uh, Claire, the artist, has told that artist is a trunk, and he takes from the ground, and he is a trunk that takes all those essence and making uh, the leaves, the flowers, the fruits. Uh, so. Don't be shy about it. And any critique actually is uh, very welcome. It might help you, it might not. You will decide which will help you and which will not. You are totally alone and uh, you are on the on the you are the guide of this thing. Uh, now about uh, you know about the meaning of art and meaning of artworks, I don't think it's actually about uh, understanding or or even skills because skills is also a tool you know you can become a, a great you know in in drawing but maybe you want to have you become yourself in this drawing maybe yes maybe not it's again you who will tell this but uh, there are so many different uh, different kind of, of of ways of of expressing yourself uh, pollock for example he he couldn't paint uh, realistically and he is one of the most famous artists in the world it's we're living in a in a in a period very fascinating period there are many uh informations now and uh let's let's see how how also you know the the the, the future of art might be i think that um, the digital thing will go more and more it's the most uh, fast evolving mediums that we have now 3D is also very, very, a lot of things are changing in 3D also. It, I've seen so many changes from the beginning till now. And we are entering a period where um, computers will be used more and more. And uh, with the coming of uh, virtual reality, there'll be even more and more, and there'll be a lot of impact on the society. So there'll be a lot of impact also on the arts, because as we said, uh, art is very much correlated with uh, life. And uh, all those changes that we are living right now, even the pandemic is kind of a change. It has turned out people to work from home. I've seen a very nice uh, webinar on by BenQ by a guy who explains what will you will need to create your own home studio. You can learn a lot of things about uh, from the internet. And when I was starting, there wasn't the internet the way that it is now. So. Uh, this this period has a lot of positive and a lot of negative, but uh, try to be positive. Try to take everything that is good for you. Try to uh, send away anything that you feel that distracts you from creating, from being you, and trying to find ways that will make you work. Because only through um, through working, from experimenting, you'll find your own voice and your own way of of projecting things, and you will also change through this uh, you yourself. Uh, and it's it's so much correlated. So uh, it's not so much about uh, understanding, as I said, or mastery. Uh, it's it's about it's about uh, doing and it's about experience and uh, all all art comes from love and uh, the love for for doing something if if you if you love doing it if you if you get in love with this uh, you will become actually an artist there's uh, there'll be a need for you to express yourself and it won't really matter if uh, many people will follow you if if you are persistent many people will follow you I'm pretty sure about this, and uh, I never thought I would become an artist. I never planned either. I, I, I thought that uh, I would become nothing. I didn't know what I would become, actually. I was kind of worried about, about it. But I found this 3D. This 3D was inspirational for me. For me. Of course, I had already said that I liked the arts in general. I was already studying, but I wasn't in the, in the, in the uh, path uh, uh, as, as uh, I, I, I wanted to do. I have a last question for you, for those uh, who work on uh, uh, 3D. 
just just out of curiosity, uh, for those who, who know 3D and uh, uh, are working in 3D, which one you prefer? You prefer the 2D or the 3D way of, of working? Okay, so more prefer 3D. Uh, for me, both are very interesting. It's it's not a matter of a better uh, medium or something like this. There's no better or or good or bad. There are actually, I don't think that those uh, definitions actually apply to arts. It's it's and I repeat it again. It's about your voice. It's about about your trace in this life and this existence. And uh, I've showed you uh, artworks which were created uh, 26,000 years ago. Can you imagine this this state? And we have this dialogue with it. You never know if somebody in the future will be uh, influenced by you. And uh, you never know if uh, in, the, um, in the next two, three years you become a famous artist. I've seen artists to be, be famous in one year. And in these ages that we live through the internet, you can become very fast and you can become very fast, you know, from being famous, not famous. So it needs persistent, it needs love. It needs, uh, it, it, you, you have to become a little this. It, it, it has to come to your blood in a way. And um, I'll close this uh, because uh, the, sometimes, you know, one of the things that many artists are working, they don't know where to, to stop. And the best answer that I got, uh, and uh, I totally agree with, with that, it was uh, when uh, Jackson Pollock was interviewed once and uh, he was asked uh, about this and how, how do you know uh, that uh, an uh, artwork is finished? How, how, uh, how do you know when you're finished with a painting? And uh, Jackson Pollock said, how do we know when you're finished making love? So, so this is it, uh, more or less, about uh, those topics. I thought, I think that, uh, I, I hope actually, that I could uh, help you. It's not, we don't have much time. We have the question and answers uh, soon now. So uh, prepare your questions. You can actually already start typing it. Uh, you can ask me anything you like. I will try to to answer it, I, uh, and uh, I will be glad to do it. So uh, please start if you have any questions. Don't be shy. So the first question is, so which, which software do I use for rendering? Well, uh, this is actually um, a 3D guy's talk. Uh, all, the soft, all, the, all the rendering software are perfect now. Unless you become a very specialist in rendering, so you can choose, you will know by then. I use the Ray, I use Corona Render, I've used, oh, it was my passion actually, the rendering in the 3D. So, um, I use mental ray at the time. It's not the case anymore. It doesn't exist. I think I, I've I've used um, renderings, which, uh, renders which many of them don't exist anymore. But I had a feeling about V-Ray, and which is actually domi dom dominator the, now in the in the in the industry. But uh, any any render is very good. all the 3D programs, especially the high end, are really really good now. Really good now. And when you become more advanced, you will know because you have worked on it and you have searched which one to follow. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the question is wait a second. I need to make uh, because some, some questions are, are big. So I need to open.
I cannot recommend you any classes or YouTube video. It's something that you need. You you really need to search for yourself. It's part of the game because there are millions of them. You have the first question that you have to ask: What I'm interested in. And when you when you find a key word, uh, key uh, key elements for the for your answer, you just put also on the Google this that I want this, etc. So, so what is a routine in a visual artist life? Well, I can tell only about my life. So uh, the good thing about, and I think this is the most important, uh, beside the need to to express and stuff, is that is the freedom. And uh, I I have managed and, uh, to to wake up any time I like, uh, any to work any time I work I want. But don't think that uh, I wake up like too late actually I, I wake up too late because i work a lot in the night but uh, i have to say that i work a lot i have pressed myself into working a lot other people who are working in a company for example which the 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 principles that i told you they imply also on on the on the working for a commission for a, co a company because okay it's a different frame of working than the one that i do but um uh, what they, they will need from you as an artist are those principles. They will uh, they have taken about the, the things that you know, that you have worked on, either technical or, or uh, conceptual or any kind of. Uh... Uh, do you believe in that studying in university is crucial step for becoming an artist? Well, any kind of education is good. But I don't think it's crucial anymore because um, it's good if you can do it, do it. Because uh, one other thing with universities, you be with people who are also uh, interested in the same thing, and you can get along with them and talk about uh, about those things and uh, what you are interested in. And uh, uh, but 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 if it's crucial, it's not. I think more and more artists which are becoming famous are not actually with a degree. And uh, there are many, uh, like Mauricio Catalan with the, the banana guy, he has not studied at all. But he has studied in his own way. So he has developed his uh, abilities in, uh, in his own ways. So uh, being an artist, it's also finding your own way. I've told you, it's really important to understand this. In my belief, of course, you can disagree. It's you're perfectly free to do to do this. And uh, if uh, work on pad is essential to me, no, because I don't paint actually in the on the computer. I paint uh, with uh, from my from my uh, lately. I'm painting from photography and from. Uh, uh, from my works, my 3D. So 3D now is becoming like a sketch for a painting. And uh, I, I'm painting right now with a canvas, that I have a canvas, canvas on the art, on the sketch, on 3D, or, or a, a photo, or something that I create in Photoshop. And then I have a canvas on the surface that I will work. So it's easier, it's just easier, to, but, but with the projector, that I've showed you, it's easier to have a contour. So, where it's, so if you're after this, but you can also implement a work and all that I just look and paint or I work from my mind. It's not a matter of creating a head that looks totally, you know, the same. It's, uh, as Pollock again said, it's now the, the, the art is from within. Before it was looking at nature and trying to uh, uh, depict what I see and this kind of beauty. And now it's from within with, because uh, photography came and took this work, this part of the work. And 3D now you, you can project something that doesn't exist actually. And this is something that I like in 3D that you don't work actually with material, you work with pixels, it's nothing. And by the way, you know, uh, it's, it's digital format. It can be open in the same exact uh, way from a device in, 20,000 million years. If there's a device that can read this and the artwork will be the same. So we have a lot of questions. I'll try to answer them all, but let's see. Can you write exactly the name of the so softwares that you use? Uh, I use, I cannot write uh, down now, uh, but 
it's easy just to uh, Google things. I'll be telling you this because you need to start to uh, search Google because there's a lot of things that you uh, will find from, from the internet. Actually, from the internet, you can find almost everything now. So it's also essential to be an artist of yourself because uh, art projects the time of its, its age. So we are artists of 2020. We are in this age. And uh, the artists that were before, they were showing their, their, their society, their way of working. Uh, the guy who's painting on the cave is, work, is painting the, uh, what he saw. So we need to, to be, uh, you don't have to be the best in searching. It's not, you don't have to be professional. You need to find your way towards this. It's not that difficult. It needs some time. You need to, to dedicate this time. But I use 3ds Max. You can use Cinema 4D Blender, which is free on the internet. Uh, I, I use Dust 3D from the uh, figures, the human figures that I use. But there are other also. You just write down on Google 3D figures, uh, humans, and you'll find it. How do you normally work with modeling? Do you start from scratch? No, I, I, I start from scratch from any other element except from the humans. But I edit them a lot because it's a starting point for me, the um, configuration of the pose. And, uh, and the humans, you know, it's a symbol for me. It's a symbol of humanity. And most of the works uh, are about uh, relations human relations or relations, as I said, inside you. Sometimes there are forces which are uh, one is totally different from the other and they fight inside you and at least this happens in me and uh, i added the 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 the, the models um, inside 3ds max which is a platform actually and uh, and uh, all the environment that uh, I work, it's always from scratch. I, I do with many, many things. Uh, you will see, you will see. But when, when I first uh, created my first uh, uh, chair and uh, table and put a light with uh, no global illumination, which is a term for uh, light going, uh, going to a surface and uh, bouncing and giving more light to the scene, uh, the the renderers now are so advanced. They are so advanced. You can you can do perfect. If you if you look for architecture uh, visualization, you can see architecture which is 3D, and you won't believe that this is not a photo now. And you can do it. How long does it take to learn 3D software to apply your idea to 3D? Well. Uh, it depends on the person, of course, how much time he'll dedicate to this and uh, how much he's willing to to start this. But the time now is right. There are many tutorials on YouTube that you just write 3D for beginners or uh, Maya for beginners, 3ds Max for beginners. The the, the software that you, um, if you if you're a total beginner and you ask me which one uh, I will start now, I will start probably with Cinema 4D which I don't know them, but I have read and seen around, or Blender. Uh, Cinema 3D has a lot of tutorials and it has a big community of people who help each other. It's a good tool. It's All of them are good tool, a great tool. I, I use 3ds Max because I started at that, that time and uh, I have a sentimental to this. Uh, it's a very steady uh, piece of uh, software. It's, it's really, really great. Uh, but I, I, I would calculate that in a year or two, you can make really, really artworks, which you won't believe if you could go to the future. You can do very fast things in 3D. It's a very fast medium. You just need to get, a, 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 you know, familiar with the interface, with a lot of buttons. But I tell you, don't be afraid with this. The, uh, the, the success of something is to not be afraid, actually. Apart from competition, competitions, do you recommend any other way to jump into exhibitions? Uh, there are many exhibitions that uh, you can take part. 
you need to uh, uh, show the, uh, them their works and they will uh, accept you, the group exhibitions. You can start with many, there are so many exhibitions right now. And now because of pandemics, there are many online exhibitions. Uh, you can find them, there are a lot of them. You can, there are um, some sites that uh, can send you emails about new competitions or new artists wanted, as they are called. Uh, get in touch with uh, 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 galleries. Get in touch. Send them the. If, if you believe you have a good amount of work and uh, uh, you think that you could show your work, uh, send them. You never know. I never knew that. I, I, when I sent, you know, the first time to, to the competition, I never thought I would win. I would win, but it happened, and I won again and again. So, don't be a critic of your work. You just be yourself. Don't be a critic of yourself. Let the others do it. I think, um, uh, who was it? Uh, I think it was Warhol who said that, uh, uh, well, the other people uh, talk about if what you do is art, you create more art. And this is, this is also true. Do you, do you need to look for some clients to be able to leave now? like working for brands, etc. Well, it, it helps, of course you, it depends also how you want to set up your, your, your career. What, what is your uh, main point? If you want to become uh, like an artist, for example, like me, that is main um, work is to create artworks and sell them through galleries, through your own website. Now I believe that um, it's, it's a change in time. We're in a turning point of the society, but it takes along with it all of it, all the activities, so artistic acti activities as well. And uh, I, I predict that many galleries will close because they, people, they, ca they cannot go to, to this. And th they see that uh, the galleries through the internet are working. And I'm selling my artworks, the originals also, which are uh, more expensive and people without seeing it, they can buy it. Of course, I give to them the ability, if they don't like, they can se send it back in the same um, of course, state that it was sent, no damage. But any, any, you know, it's not easy to make money, especially uh, with art, especially in the beginning. It's not easy, but with persistence, you can do it. I really believe it. It happened to me. It happened to millions of others. And we are living in a time when art is very much in consumed. We have the most artists that ever existed. Of course, we have the more people that ever existed. And we have the more biggest audience also. The audience is, is very big now. You're talking to the whole of the world now. And you're talking with a language which everybody understands. How do you discipline yourself at work, especially in the beginning? I guess you mean, how to start and I, I, you you have your goal and you said i'm going i i, I, I will become an artist you just take the a decision and then when you have made the decision you have made a very big uh, uh step and then you'll find a way and uh, you need to push yourself in it's not that easy because it sounds oh you can wake up anytime like it's not the case you can stop becoming an artist as uh, you know with the means of uh, getting money if you start working right if, if you stop working you need to be an active artist and uh, you know um let's say I, I don't like this kind of but, but the less good active artist has more success than a very good one artist which doesn't make works so How much time do you usually spend uh, with each 3D piece? I was asked this on Instagram, I think, the other day, and how much I, I sent an artwork, and uh, he asked me how much time did it take to me. So I give two answers. I said 70, uh, I'm sorry, 47 years or three days. Uh, in terms of creating it, it took three days. But I had the idea, I had uh, sketches in my head because I mainly have the sketches in my head, but sometimes I use a pencil and I create some ideas. But to get to this artwork, it needs the time that you have lived. Everything that you have lived is kind of crucial inside what you, you might not see it, but it's there. 
that's why I, I, I said to you that be true, try to be uh, true with your work. It's not a matter of ugly or uh, or uh, beautiful. It's it's a matter of what, how you said it. In terms of inspiration, do you follow a process for your for new ideas? Where do you find inspiration? Inspiration. I, for me, I, I like I said that uh, everything it can be, but uh, the relations are very inspiring to me. I, I always remember myself looking at people. You know, an artist is an observer as well. It's part of being an artist. Uh, you observe the world, you observe nature, you observe what's going on in your society. I observe politics as well. Uh, everything is is important. And but uh, women for me are very inspirational. I find the symbol of women, the mother, the partner, the, the friend, is very inspirational and uh, it's it's an idea that I develop in my work. Um, uh, the, the future itself it's inspiring because the future is something to come, but uh, it, 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 the shape of it, it will be f by the people who have um, imagined it, you know, and uh, gain more and more people to, to follow their ideas and uh, they have become inspirational to others. Don't, uh, don't be sad if others uh, steal your ideas. It's, it's actually an honor for you. Nobody actually can steal your ideas because uh, your artwork is you. It's like somebody imitating you. Well, for how long they can imitate you? Not for long. Um, I think uh, that those are the main uh, questions and answers. There's one more. How do you normally work with models? Do you start from scratch? No, I think I said about that. Uh, no, I work uh, directly in the in the 3D. And uh, sometimes, really, I have an idea, and uh, it turns out totally different in a different way that I thought about it. But it's interesting. It's I'll tell you, it's a game, and I will close with this. I will tell you that uh, it's it's your universe. This art thing that when you're creating, it's your 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 own universe, and in this, uh, it's it's hard to invite others, except from the final work, which is a very good thing to invite other to others to your universe. But uh, you are alone there, you're free. There is no gravity, there is no problems, there are no illness probably, or there is if you choose to it to have to to be, because you want to talk about it about your experience, and. Um, I, I I will say this again, and uh, I will I'll close with this. And uh, thanking you for coming here and listening to my uh, perspective. Uh, I, I, I will say this again that I think you can make it if you really want it. You can make it. You can even make it uh, very good, more good than you can believe. You can be, you can become. Maybe some of you are really the top one artist of the future here. I I really hope so. But it's really a matter also of luck, you know, but working and working and working, you know, um, makes your chances uh, to succeed uh, more uh, true to happen, right? And uh, I really think uh, that uh, if you manage to, uh, to get in touch with, you, with yourself, but uh, educating yourself and developing yourself, is actually the key to being an artist. Now, for the uh, details of it, you will always have the intern, you will always ha have other people, other artists. You can ask me sometimes. I, when I have the time, you know, I open, uh, I answer their questions on my media, and uh, uh, I, I try because this is also the answer of, of art, as I said, communication. 
so uh, thank you for being here. It's, uh, it's, it's a pleasure and it's a pleasure for you looking at my work. I will look at your work if you want me to, it's, if, I, if I have the time. Sometimes I don't answer because that means I don't have the time actually. It's not that I don't like something. And this, especially this time, is very uh, limited for me. I have a mo moving also, I moved to a new house. So thank you very much. Don't uh, forget to follow the news on my social media. Also, BenQ. We want to thank BenQ for the effort that they do for the artists. I believe that this is really an honest uh, uh, piece of attempt to, to help the artists. Uh, look at the other uh, uh, webinars. Uh, I, I'm especially uh, from a beginner point of view, you will find for sure something interesting. And look for the products. I my my monitor is BenQ monitor, and I'm really happy about it. So thank you very much again, and see you. Bye bye.